portion of our discussion, Doctor. Well, if Meir Kahana does not think that the United States is an ally of Israel, I don't know who would. I, mean, I don't see any point of disagreement in that. But my point, my presence here is to highlight one point, and that is there are people at the present time in the occupied territory that are suffering because of Kahana's and his likes, and there has to be a stop to it. If our interest, that of the United States or the entire world, is peace, there has to be an end to the Israeli occupation. But if your interest is really peace, will you and your people recognize the lawful, peaceful existence of Israel? The existence... The issue of the lawful existence of the state of Israel will have to come within a comprehensive peace settlement that includes the existence of a Palestinian state as well. Uh, that's well, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of like, that's kind of like telling your girlfriend uh, you're going to wear a rubber and you don't. You know, I mean, uh, uh, why do you have to have that? Why can't you first say they have the right to exist? All right, and because they have the right to exist, you would like to sit at the peace table with them. I think that if the question is directed to the representative of the Palestinian people, and that is the Palestine Liberation Organization then they will receive an appropriate answer for that. Let me ask you, uh, Rabbi, your idea for moving the Palestinians out of Israel may meet with considerable opposition. Uh, what will you say to the Palestinians who refuse to leave? Because you have suggested that maybe they just ought to leave Israel. First of all, let's get one thing clear. This cop-out of an answer here made it quite, quite clear that the problem is not the West Bank. This man, and quite honestly from his point of view, believes that Jaffa is also his. My mother was born in Jaffa. You what the hell are you talking about? That's wonderful. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would pay him to come on, I would pay him to come on shows with me. He is exhibit one for Kahana. Because his mother came from Jaffa, he'll never recognize Jaffa as part of Israel. You never recognize Israel. And would, I, you, would you, under a comprehensive peace plan, rec recognize Jaffa as part of Israel? If it includes the establishment of a Palestinian state. Yes. All right. What if, what if the Israelis? All right. What if the Israelis said, "Okay, uh, we are going to give you the Gaza Strip as your Palestinian state." What, what would you say? You know. You are putting a hypothetical situation sure, that does it's, not... Sure, it's all hypothetical oh, now yeah. because no one's sitting down okay. at the peace table. Let me finish. A hypothetical situation that does not make sense. Simply because at the present time, what the Palestinians representing by, represented by the PLO are saying, let us establish a mini Palestinian state on the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and the eastern part of Jerusalem. And within, once that state is established, and if, if you want peace, then peace will come along with that well, as well. Let's, let, let's, let's iron this out for just a second, all right? And jump in here, Meyer, if you want to. At eight sure point. Will. If, if, we, if the deal is made, all right, and the Israelis say they're going to give you the West Bank and they're going to give you the Gaza Strip, don't you think they'd be stupid putting themselves into a pincer movement? You've got them on the left, you've got them on the right, you move in, you squeeze if them I out. If I were Israel, I would not worry. Israel has been able to defeat any combination of Arab armies over the last three decades. Who the hell is going to be right? Well, you know... Yeah. They had the West Bank. Everything that he just said that he, uh, that he wants as his mini-state, they had. Why didn't Jordan create a Palestine until 67? Why did simply Egypt because, protect, simply because if you want to talk to the Palestinians, talk Egypt to the Palestinians, Gaza, not Jordan. Why didn't Egypt, which had Gaza, create Palestine? The answer is that Jordan doesn't want Palestine, Egypt doesn't want Palestine, and hell, I don't want Palestine either. Don't you, don't you really feel, and let's not go back to 1948 to solve to. this, because we can't solve it in 1948. But he is going back to 48. 
His mother came from Jaffa. Is that and a crime? I understand. But he's on already, the contrary. He's on already... The contrary. Well, you, I, you came from I the United States. Him. Do you want the United States to... I understand him. I respect him. That's why I know that he'll never give me peace. I understand him. He, he sincerely believes that all of Israel is his. I understand him. Now, what's going to happen? If you take power in Israel, which is ah. all of the time becoming a more and more of a reality, all right? First of all, first of all, that, that worries me. That worries me because quite obviously you don't think of this country as an ally. That bothers me. I think of this country as every country has interests and not allies. Sure. When I say that it is not an ally, what I, what I mean is that when American interests run counter to those of Israel, America quite naturally will follow its own interests, which is natural, which is normal. I expect that. That's why it's not an ally. But at we no have, time since the interest. creation of the Israeli state yes. has the United States not had interests, as you say. That's true. In and Israel. their interests in 1956 caused Eisenhower to pressure Israel to pull out of the Sinai. That's was it Israel's interest that caused them to bomb and kill 37 innocent Americans on the Liberty? It was a terrible, a terrible, terrible tragedy, and that's what happens when a spy ship spies. A terrible, a terrible, a terrible even tragedy. to your allies, I even agree to with your you. allies. I think, I think it was a terrible, terrible mistake on the part of a U.S. spy ship to be Who spying on, on, on Israel. And secondly, I think it was a mistake bombing that, that ship. You're right. Yeah. It, was, oh, it was two mistakes. Okay, we've accomplished something. It was something. two mistakes. We've accomplished but that something, has nothing, right? That has nothing to uh, do with what my uh, I, I, again, friend over here says. Again, and I have he to says, say. The issue is not the West Bank. The issue is the legitimacy of a Jewish state, which he denies. You, you cannot start from 67. In the 1920s, before there was a Jewish state, they were, they were killing Jews. In one day, in 1929, in Hebron, they killed 67 Jews. Now, who was, inciting, who was the Nazi that was inciting them, them then in 29? Kahana? I wasn't even born yet. So therefore, the essential problem is that there can't be peace. And I say that tragically. Because I serve in the army, and my son does. But and I want peace more than both of you want peace, because you both l live here, and I can guarantee you, you will always live, live here and not, and not there again, that's for sure. So I live there, I live there, and I want peace, but he'll never give me peace. All right, when we come back, we're going to hear about Yasser Arafat's plan. Stay with us. Hey, if you like me at 9, you'll love me at 11. If you hate me at 9, you'll still hate me. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, uh, we have put, uh, we have put uh, Rabbi Mark Kahani in an extremely, uh, for most people, uncomfortable position. But for a gentleman such as himself, it doesn't bother him a bit. Joining us at home base, an old friend of mine, Dr. Mehdi. How are you, <laughs> I would say probably one of the most moderate Arabs I have uh, ever met. Uh, I want to get back to uh, some of the uh, questions with uh, Rabbi Kahani. It's a well-known fact that while the Jewish birth rate, this is Yasser Arafat's uh, solution, has been declining, the Arab population has been rising. Some even call this uh, Mr. Arafat's secret weapon against Israel. Could this mean the demise of the Jewish state? It certainly could, which is why they must go. All right. So, so what you were saying, so, so, Rabbi, so what you were saying is, Israel is not a democracy for anyone other than Jews. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. What I am saying is that any Arab who wishes to live in the Jewish state which is the way it is defined, not by Kahana, but by Zionism, may indeed live so, but not as a citizen. Does he have to swear allegiance? No. No, nothing at all. Well, in our country, if someone doesn't nothing. swear allegiance to our country, we want them the hell out of here. No, no, no. no. 
He won't. No one can expect an Arab to swear allegiance to the Jewish state. That's like You're, saying nobody can expect an Englishman to swear allegiance to the United States. But you don't uh, have to swear allegiance. You see, you see, we understand each, each other, and you, and you can't grasp this. The state no, of, I can't grasp well, that type of You're right, you're right, you're right. The state of Israel was founded as a Jewish state, just as the Arab states are Arab states. But it does not Most discriminate countries, on the basis of religion. I, tell me something. How many Jews are sitting in the, in the Syrian parliament at this moment? No, but how many Rabbi, Jews you live in Syria? What, what? 5,000. How many, how many Jews sat in the, in the uh, parliament when there were 35,000? There Tell was me. no parliament at the time, you know that. There were, it was under colonial now, powers. Now, now, all this is really irrelevant. Excuse Rabbi, something. Rabbi, Rabbi. When the French left, there was a parliament and there were 35,000 Jews. How many Jews sat there? You How know, many Jews are allowed by law to live to live inside Jordan? You know, I am I am really tired of you going back continually to the twenties and the thirties. I 30s. know you're tired. The it issue is, here is a very simple one. It there bothers are, you. There are two million Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. True. This situation cannot you're continue right. forever. You're right. And your Where solution is an imaginary solution. <laughs> it will never happen. But it will happen. It will never happen. Mayor Kahan, let me interject. Let me interject. Let me interject. Doctor, Rabbi. Doctor, Rabbi. You may have to die. You may have to die. Let me interject. Let me interject a point for just a second. Yeah. The rabbi's solution, all right, uh, being a humane man, yes. right? All right? <laughs> rabbi's solution By the way, is I to pay. I used to call him rabbi all right. in reverence for Judaism. I won't, all right. I won't call right. you, you rabbi either, all right? All right. Thank you. All right, fine. But what the rabbi's solution is, is to pay these Palestinians to move out of Israel. Am I right, correct? Right. How is a bankrupt country like Israel, which has no money, going to pay? Right? We American citizens are going to be expected to pay. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. 800,000 Jews fled Arab countries, and the Arabs didn't pay them a penny. We'll even it out. Oh, but you said you were going to pay them. Now you're not going to pay them. Of course we'll pay them. As soon as they pay us what they owe us, ah, we'll so then you, give it back to you them. You have tossed another coal on the fire, Rabbi. What's more, the Rabbi? More, if uh, if more I offered him all the money in, in, not in the world, in the universe, he wouldn't take it because he has national pride. They won't take the money. Dr. Mehdi, do you have Absolutely. And therefore, and therefore, you see what the rabbi is suggesting is unworkable. He wants to buy those people, and he just said that he cannot buy them. That's therefore, naturally. I will then move them out without money. Of course, and how are you planning to move them? Based on a divine right theory, the <clears> rabbi <throat> starts from the assumption that God has given them this land, a divine right theory, it's quite true. which and I thought died with James the same thing, Dr. Do, 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 do also, but you are not, not a Christian, so you don't have I thought that, that, uh, that the, the theory of divine right died with James the Third and Hitler. It is alive and well. Alive and well. Alive alive and well. And dwell. With every Bible-believing Christian and Jew. Yes. You have a problem. You don't believe in, in the Bible. This is your yes, problem. Sir, God, now you are wrong. I am a Christian Palestinian. Well, then, I don't know what I you're don't doing believe with what the Bible you are saying. You may not believe that. This, this is your problem. So your it's not my problem. Is wrong. You, are, you are a non-believing Christian. How can, this is wrong. how can this problem be solved save another war, all right? Here's the problem. If there is another war, obviously America is going to have to become involved. Going to have to become involved. Why? Because, let me tell you something. No. The world is starting to turn against Israel because of what's going on in the West Bank. All right? That's wrong because that creates more hatred. I don't want one American troop to help Israel. Not one. Not one. But... God, you stay there. We'll take care of them. Don't worry about it. Keep on dreaming. Dr. Nagy, you want to say something? There are two diametrically opposed suggestions. The rabbi wants all of Palestine and forcefully evicting the Palestinians, if has to, 
We suggest differently that this Palestine shall be for all the Jews and all the Palestinians. AP to AP. All Palestine to all Palestinians, including all the Jews. All including the American Well, let's see. Let's see if we can cut through. Let's see if we can cut through hate here just a second, all right? To the rabbi, question. I don't suppose you'd be too thrilled if your daughter came home and announced her engagement to an Arab, would you? I mean, even if, even, even if he was a doctor. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't be too thrilled if she came home with any non-Jew, Arab or non-Arab. Is that to say? So therefore, is that to say you just keep your hands off my daughter. I guess we're going to have to stop dating. Yeah. Let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Seriously, uh, again, uh, to Dr. Mehidi, can Arabs and Jews live together, and should they be allowed to marry? Of course. It is an individual decision. If a boy and a girl love each other, it is their private individual decisions. They have my blessings. That is the only humane 20th century. How do you feel about that, Doctor? I believe that the issue here is not the marriage of a Jew to an Arab. Exactly. Right. The issue here is But how the do you faith. feel about it? How do I feel about it? Yeah. It is an individual decision. Okay. Let, if they want to make it, let them make it. Right. But the point and the issue here, there are <laughs> over 2 million Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. There are over 2.5 million Palestinians scattered in some 70 refugee camps around the Middle East. There has to be an end to their suffering. If the, Mr. Kahana believes in anything called anything remotely close to peace he would understand that all right you're very concerned about that and i can understand does your concern translate to all people who live under occupied people such as the afghans such as the irish in northern ireland are you concerned about them but you know the hypocrisy and it's a very good question that you ask and i find it very hypocritical for the u.s government in so many instances to call Mujahideen in Afghanistan guerrilla, guerrillas and freedom fighters, while Palestinians fighting for their homeland are terms as terrorists. You know you know? yeah. They are not terrorists, they're freedom fighters. Well, We're going to bring great, it all back home. There's a great, great difference. Why? They're the fighting for I, their homeland. I, I will. The Afghan never tried to wipe out the Russians. These Palestinians, before 67, tried to wipe out Israel, and they lost. And you can't begin in 1987. You have to begin prior Rabbi, to that. When you talk about the Israel, root of the problem is you that, Jews that and these American poor Jews Palestinians were aggressors to begin Dr. with. Dr. Mehdi. Well, right. they're aggressors right. to begin with. Dr. Mehdi, don't interrupt. I'm they speaking. are aggressors to begin with. It's not the Knesset of Israel. Dr. Mahidi, let me, let me hear the let conclusion. Me, now, the unfortunate fa fact is that I remember in May of 67, the Arabs throughout the world, Lebanon, Cairo, Jordan, cheering Jews into the sea. That's what he really wants. But right. however, oh, all right. no, that's well, what he really wants. All right. I understand that. But that let's no, look at the mindset. Let's mouth. look I at the mindset. Baba, can I get you, in here? I understand Gentlemen. you and have no fear. Let's you will, look. You will live your entire life in this country and not in, in let's in look at Let's look at the mindset, all right, if I can, of the Arabs back in 1967, 1947, all right? We're talking about people who were under the yoke of colonialism. By 1967, they felt some national pride. So I can understand the hate that the Jews had for the Arabs and the Arabs had for the Jews. I simply can't understand it being translated in a new generation. You've got young Palestinians on the West Bank who are now doing the fighting, young Israelis on the West Bank who are now taking care of the Israeli response, and it's an over-response. Not at all. It's an it over-response. the same war. It's there was a... There was a bullets there was against a, rocks, there was Rabbi? There a Palestinian national movement being. It was a Palestinian national movement in the 1930s, in the 1920s, and earlier. And when Jews came home, came back to their land, they found Arabs who sincerely believed that Jews had no right to uh, be there. 
this is the problem. Because you were wanting to displace them. All right. I want to bring this back home, all right? What does it mean to us? We're going to find that out in the next segment of the program. Stand by. Say, if you like me at 9, you love me at 11. If you hate me... Welcome back. Let's, uh, let's, move this, let's move this a little long, uh, along a little bit, all right? We've got, uh, joining us at home base, uh, Rabbi and Professor Rosenberg. Uh, uh, you're going to tell us, I assume, that hate not only is on the rise over in that part of the world, uh, Arabs against Jews, but that hate is on the rise right in our own nation because of what is going on. I've been speaking out in Westchester County about the acts of anti-Semitism that have occurred. We have uh, three synagogues that have been swastikaed, a number of churches, interestingly enough, that have had swastikas put upon them. And at least it is my opinion that anti-Semitism is on the rise, not only in Westchester County, but also in Crown Heights and Williamsburg in Borough Park. And it's very interesting to note that Jews are killed, killed as in Borough Park. Jews are maimed, stolen from, everything happens. And you know, the now, police that happens say, on the subways to all of us. Well, that's true. <laughs> Except there's one little difference. Except there's one little difference. In the case of a chassid with peyote sideburns, and the man was killed. In fact, they just observed the 30th day of his mourning period. You know that the police said this was not an act of anti-Semitism. Oh, no. Nothing was stolen from him. Nothing was taken from him. He was killed, but it wasn't an act of anti-Semitism. But let me tell you something else. If this happens to anyone else, if it happens to a black person who I admire, the whole world will go to bat. Why did but you if have it happens to, to a Jew, everyone will be quiet. Why did you have to say who I admire? Yeah. I admire black people today because they know what it means to take power. They know what it means to make certain that the world reacts. And for that, they deserve my respect. All right, let me, let me ask you a question. Rabbi, Rabbi Kahani has told us that, uh, and uh, we have heard a number of times, that the Arabs are multiplying. Uh, this seems to be the same argument that some of the racists in this country used about the blacks, all right? The blacks are multiplying as fast as flies. What the hell are they going to do about it? Uh, I'm not sure if it's Hasidic Jews, but there is one, one area of Jews that their sole purpose in marriage mm -hmm. is to have as many children as they can. I mean, something in there uh, about as many children as there are stars in the sky. I mean, if that's their purpose, how come the Arabs are beating them out? Well, Mort, let me tell you something. My parents were in the Auschwitz concentration camp, and I lost, and I lost my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts, my entire family. And I don't know about anyone else, but I already have three children, and I'm continuing. And my message to all Jews is populate, populate, and populate. <laughs> Dr. Mahadi, your response? Let me add my uh, strength to the rabbi. Going to be a lot of messing around going on, I guess. And condemn unconditionally any act of anti-Semitism anywhere. Anti-Semitism being an act against the Jews because they are Jews. Or against mm -hmm. Arabs. They're Semitics, too. Well, is that, uh, Today, today, within the American vocabulary, anti-Semitism has come to mean prejudice against Jews. So, of course, we are against any prejudice towards anyone. But in this particular case, I joined the rabbi in condemning anti-Semitism. Those anti-Semites are not my friends. They are my enemies. Anti-Semitism, actually, is the mother of Zionism. If it were not for Hitler, the Jews would not have gone to Palestine. So we condemn anti-Semitism wholeheartedly. You know, and Rabbi, Rabbi Kahani, I mean, that's you know, that's nonsense. It's really an, an incredible thing. Long before there was Hitler, it was Herzl, and long before there was Herzl, he didn't yeah, succeed. Uh, we had already 500,000 Jews in the land of Israel before Hitler. However, by, my my great grandfather was born there. In any case. Rabbi, what a line. Uh, Dr. Mehdi, Dr. Mehdi, up until now, we have been friends. Never, ever call me a liar again. Rabbi, Rabbi, you know, 
Well, whether you, whether you like back, it. Getting back to the same point. Whether you, whether you like it or Dr. not. Dr. Meddy is not a moderate. He's just a clever Arab. That's all he is. All right, well, you know. Dr. Meddy. <laughs> Dr. Meddy does not accept a Jewish state anywhere of any size. Is that not true? And don't lie. Rabbi, are you praising me or condemning me praising with you, your attack? Praising you. <laughs> I am More praising you with very, very faint praise. Now listen right, to me. Let, let me ask you. Is that true or say yes or no? Rabbi, are I, you prepared to accept a Jewish state of any size or shape? I have yes told no? you clearly hundreds of times. A Jewish state, no. no. The Jewish That's people, right. yes. Fine. A Jewish state, no. Uh, yes. This is no, the problem. Let me get in here. You know, let me get in here. I'm on the show, too, you guys. Zip it. Zip it. Dr. Mahidi, let me ask you. Let me ask the rabbi, Can rabbi, whether you like it or not, Morton. whether you like it or not, wherever you go, there's controversy not far behind. You're born in Brooklyn. Now you've turned your attention right back. To, now you've turned your way itself right back to, uh, you know, to the United States in some respects with your anti-Jesse Jackson campaign. Why are you, an Israeli cabinet member, so concerned Knesset. with an America? Knesset member. Knesset. Why cabinet are you member so, is going to be sued. Why are you so... <laughs> Why are you so concerned with, uh, you know, with American presidential candidates? Because Why do you Jews still have the passports, by the way? about Jews, no matter where they are. The American Jew concerns me. The Soviet Jew concerns me. Just as I would, I would expect a good Catholic to be worried about the persecution of Catholics anywhere and everywhere, and not just in his, in his country. To me, Jesse Jackson represents all that is bad, sick, Ugly. He oh, hates I white. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He hates Jews. He hates white. I would like to make a point. Not even a second. Rabbi he hates Jews. He hates white. And he's bad. I want to make a point. He is bad for America. He's bad for Jews. And just and there, if if Jesse Jackson would be white and say half of what he had uh, said, then Jews and Christians would have been. Tearing down, down banners. Dr. It's Bacar. ironic, it's Dr. ironic Bacar. that this man talks about racism and attacks a person like Jackson. The rabbi here indicated how worried you are about attacks against Jews. But this person here and the JDL, the Jewish Defense League, three years ago collaborated in killing a Palestinian American on the West Coast. I wonder, Has that ever been proven? That? I want to tell you something that. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, you are going to be served with a libel suit. Thank and you. And believe I me, lawyer. Thank you. What, but I mean it. You, you are going to be served with a, with a criminal libel suit for talk what you FBI just FBI said now. It's not me. Thank me. You will help me. When we come back, my friends, we're going to hear from some of the other real people. All right, our audience tonight. Stand up. Hey, if you like me at 9, you'll love me at 11. All right. Let me get back. Let me get back. Dr. Mehdi has something here that he wanted to show. Would you turn it on this camera, doctor? Would you do this rapidly? Because this isn't an this art is sale. A, the whole mark of Jerusalem is the mosque. This is the Dome of the Rock. This is a mosque. It is not a temple. The New York Times, CBS, NBC, ABC, all refer to this mosque as temple. Please remember, members of the news media, that a mosque is not a temple. Let me go to these folks at the Loud Mouse now. Young lady, would you identify yourself by your first name only? My name is Donna. I'm a third generation in this country, American Arab. Every evening I look at my television set and I see my Arab brothers and sisters being tortured and killed and living under conditions that no human being should be allowed to live under. I look at this and I'm outraged that my tax dollars pay for this and support this treatment of my Arab brothers and sisters. Where is democracy in Israel for the Arabs? Where? It's not there. And when Meir Kahana says that they are, we are not their allies, 
We support your bankrupt government. How much more of an ally do you want us to be? Yeah. I am not here, but I, I, I want to say one thing before I stop. I am interested in peace, not because I was beaten in 1967, not because I was beaten, you know, it had nothing to do with that. I'm living for today. I'm caring about those people that are dying today. I want it to stop. I want peace. I want a homeland for my Arab brothers and sisters. And that is not too much to ask. And I recognize the state of Israel. Young man. My question is to Rabbi Kahana. As an American citizen, Rabbi Kahana, you've enjoyed democratic rights. You've tested our government. You fought for the rights of prisoners to have kosher food. Also, when your citizenship was in danger, you fought successfully in American courts to retain your citizenship. Yet in Israel, not only do you espouse throwing the Arabs out, you're for the creation of a theocracy, which is opposed by many Israelis, including Orthodox Jews. How do you reconcile the fact that you who have enjoyed democracy in the United States and grew because of democracy, espouse non-democracy and a theocracy in Israel? All right, on a person you got a question. Good for you, sir. Have a follow-up on that. Let him answer the question. Let him answer the question. I'll answer that the question with, but first, just one footnote. There won't be a single Arab getting up now, a single guest here, attacking any of these Arabs. The sickness of Jews is that here is a Jew with a yarmulke. He's a free man. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me, Dr. Dr. Medi, who knows that an Orthodox Jew must espouse a Jewish state, a theocracy, must espouse it. Not true. Most and he, ex excuse, rabbis are against excuse it. me, excuse me. I don't, I don't want to argue with you on Judaism because it would be a very, very pitiful battle. Now, I don't know about that. the fact of the matter is, the state of Israel, not founded by Mayor Kahana, but by a socialist government, declared Israel to be a Jewish state and not the kind of a state that exists in this country. If you don't grasp that, then my question to you is, are you prepared to allow the Arabs democratically, without violence, to be the majority in Israel and vote Israel out of existence as a Jewish state? Yes or no? I think, I think the question requires more than a yes or no answer, and Rabbi Kahan. In short, he has no answer. That's true. Yes or no? Rabbi Kahan. Sir, yeah. sir, yeah. sir, yeah. go ahead. Let me hear you. Let me hear you right here. My name is Zahani, and uh, I am a Palestinian Arab. I, uh, I just have an issue with Rabbi Kahani, who stated that the U.S. or the Israel does not owe the U.S. anything. As a matter of fact, that Israel is paying the U.S. in its strategic influence for Israel. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Israel receives $4.1 billion annually. That is $9,875 for every Israeli child, man, and woman. That is our tax money. And the United States government, in its bankrupt policy, gives the U.S., the, the Israeli lobby in this country, a virtual veto no. power over its no. policy. Quickly, I want to hear from the, the rabbi. I want to hear from the And I want a quick answer, rabbi. Part we need to take a break. my program is, when I am the uh, prime minister, we will ask this, this government to stop all economic aid to Israel. You'll die, rabbi. All right. You'll we'll die, right rabbi. Back. We'll be right back. Stand by. We'll continue this discussion. Say, if you like me at 9, you'll love me at 11. If you Quickly, quickly, quickly let me hear from the rabbi. I think it's very interesting to note that the American press is doing what the Arabs could not do, which tried to destroy Israel, and the American press should be condemned. It's very interesting to note. You know, yes, it's very interesting to note. Very interesting to note that when Jews are hurt, and when Jews are killed, and when Jews are massacred by Palestinians, they don't say anything. But if anything happens to the Palestinians, it hits the front page. I sincerely, I sincerely do not believe that, all right? I do not side with the American press in many instances. But I got to tell you, I think the American press has dealt with a very even hand on this subject. I think with a very even hand. And if anything, they have been more repressive of the Arabs than they have of, of the Israelis. 
Now, as far as the comment, as far as the car, shut up! As far as the comment, as far as the comment that's made, as far as the comment that is made that that we are that we are on Israel's side because of our own strategic interests, I think there's some validity to that. I also think there's validity to the fact that we're powerful enough to turn any nation in that area of the world into an ashtray and thus into an airport. It's a civil war in the Middle East, my friends. They've got to settle it. America, unite. Help settle this thing. Good night, everybody.